So I'm going to show you folks today, uh, basically this is going to be my best shaky head setup. So, you know, I'm going to walk you through pretty much the rod, reel, line, all the way to the actual shaky head itself, what I like to use when I'm throwing a shaky head. Now, <clears throat> just to start off, I like a little bit stiffer rod when I'm talking about spinning tackle with a shaky head. Usually I'm going to be making a little bit longer cast and um so i like something it's not it's not really wimp and sticking when you're talking about a shaky head rod for me it's usually not really that light of line that i'm going to be using uh to start off let me tell you what i've got i've actually got two two spinning setups that i like for a shaky head you can use this same setup for really a ned rig or a wacky rig too but this is the one primarily that i'm going to use when i'm talking about throwing a shaky head so this is a lose 2000 2000 series TLC 2000 and uh, this rod that I got here is the cast me out now, this is this is a bad mama jumper right here if you're really serious about fishing this is the rod you want to get this is a favorite hex series now this particular one that I'm using is a seven foot two inch rod uh, medium heavy and I want to say this is a fast action but I like this particular rod obviously this hex is a top of the line the best you can get shaky head rod it's it this rod's just you know, 399 dollars now you say well i don't want to spend that much totally understand it i keep this rod in my hand a lot so for me i can justify the 399 now for you guys that want something a little bit more affordable uh you can use this rod right here this is a six stick this is i use this a lot too matter of fact i won a hundred thousand dollars on this rod and, and you know, maybe probably a lot more than that but six sticks pretty much the same thing but in a little cheaper package since i'm going with the braid to floor carbon setup <clears throat> this is this is a big line that's why you see it spooling like kind of backing out like that but this is 20 pound test mono you can use whatever this the backing that you use it doesn't matter what it is don't get too too uptight about that this is 20 pound test mono you can use fluorocarbon you can use yarn i used to use electrical tape right now the closest thing to me to hurry up and get this video done was 20 pound test mono so that's what i'm putting on here right now the, the backing material that you use doesn't matter it, it's just whatever you can find to take up some of that spool the reason i'm using back material uh some backing material on my spool is two reasons for me primarily one is obviously if you try to put braid onto your um if you try to put braid on your spool with that slick you know metal spool it's going to slip when you put any kind of tension on it the other reason is what is to take up some of the the, the spool it's going to take up some of that that um space on the spool braid is very small diameter i'm going to be using 20 pound test braid on this strike king pro grade pro grade braid and it's a little tough it's very small in diameter so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my backing material to my braid and we're going to start spooling. I like 20 pound test braid is kind of what I what I like to use. And just whatever connecting knot that you like to use to get your get from braid to fluorocarbon. It doesn't matter if it's a double uni. It doesn't matter if you want to tie FG at the bottom of it. That's fine. It don't matter. I'm just using an Alberto knot because that's what I'm familiar with. And this is just another opportunity for me to practice that knot, right? So I'm going to I'm just going to tie my Berto knot. And remember it doesn't matter what knot you use to connect your backing material to your braided line doesn't matter what you use double uni you can use a double juju you can use a single a single boo-boo knot you can hold it together with electrical tape if you want to a duct tape it don't really matter you're just trying to connect your your uh your leader knot i mean your braid to your backing material remember that braid is nothing but filler on the spool and it just gives that braid also something to hold on to so it doesn't slide around on the spool when you got that 11 pounder on i'm going to just start feeding my braid material on there this is high vis braid i like the high vis braid you can use you know gray or green any of that will work i've just kind of grown to like the high vis braid the best for a couple reasons obviously you know you can talk about strike detection you know I, I, that's one thing you know you can you can see your line moving for me the reason i like to use the high vis braid when i'm when i'm throwing a shaky head or even on on you know if i'm using braid i really like to use a high vis braid 
Fish don't really care about it. I don't think they see it. You'll hear some people argue the point. You just got to decide which side of the fence you're on on, on that, that particular conversation. But for me, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, the biggest thing for me, why I like the hobbyist braid, when I make a cast out there, a long cast, you know, a shaky head is primarily a bottom bait, a bottom bumping bait. I can tell when I'm on the bottom much better with this high vis braid. I can I can see that line moving and when it stops, and I know when my bait's on the bottom a little bit better than if I use a dark green or or or, or even gray. You know, you can use gray too. You know, I, I've used all of it over time, but I've really grown accustomed to using the uh, the high vis. I, I think that's the I think that's the way to go for me when I'm using braid. So this 20 pound test, you can use 10, you can use 15, I'm using 20. That's just kind of what I found a, a happy medium with. When I use too small a braid, I like to try to match up the line diameters as much as possible. Most of the time I'm going to be using anywhere between 8 and 12 pound test fluorocarbon when I go to tie my, you know, tie my leading material on. What I have noticed when I use too small a diameter braid, it tends to dig too much into my fluorocarbon and I break few, uh, you know, too many knots. And it's not the braid that breaks, it's the fluorocarbon that breaks. So I like to try to match up the diameters, uh, you know, as much as I can, if possible. So for a shaky head, I don't really use that light of line. 10 or 12 pound test line. I'll go as heavy as 15. The whole magic of going braid to fluorocarbon is now you can take a spinning reel, a spinning outfit, okay? And you can use 15 to 20 pound test line on your spinning outfit. If you have ever tried to spool up 12, 14, 15 pound test, 17 pound test on a spinning outfit, that crap ain't happening. It's backing off of there, but that's the beauty of it. Every time somebody sees a guy with a spinning rod, he's thinking wimpy tackle, he's thinking light line, and it's because this works much better with light line and those smaller finesse techniques. However, you can muscle, saltwater guys have proved this. That's what I love about the saltwater guys. You can put big line on, on a spinning reel. The braid to fluorocarbon lets you be flexible because you're not going to put 15 pound tests on this spinning reel and have, be a happy camper. Now with braid, a braid is much more workable and pliable and I can use it and not have to worry about that thing coming off the off of my off of my reel. So let's get ready to tie our, you know, we've got our, we got a rod, we got a reel, we got our line, we got our braid material. Um, now I'm going to tie this to 10 pound test fluorocarbon. What I'm using, this is Strike Cream. Strike Cream. How y'all like that Strike Cream? They make good line, Strike Cream does. They make ice cream and fishing line cream. Strike King 10 pound test pro grade fluorocarbon is what I'm using. This is a cool thing I like about this. Now I don't use it, I don't need it for this uh, for this particular situation, but you see how that you can pretty much spool it anywhere. Now, the question I hear you guys ask a lot of time, how much leader material do you need to use? This is the way I measure my leader material. I don't get all complicated with it. Take your leader material, I grab one end and I take my hands and I go one, okay? And then I go half, two, like that. That's how much leader material I, I use. I don't know how many inches or feet or centimeters or whatever that is. That's how much line I use. I pull it out one time and then I hold it in the center, I pull it again. However many feet that is, that's how much I use for leading material. Now, the knot that I'm gonna tie, using a shaky head, this is my perfect shaky head setup right here. This is what I'm gonna tie. I'm gonna tie Alberto knot. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box for you how you tie Alberto knot, because the light's getting a little low, and I don't really wanna make this video about knot tying, but it's very simple. I'm gonna make a loop. You're gonna start with the fluorocarbon first. Take your leading material, make a bunny ear, you stick your fluorocarbon or your braid down in that. And what I like to do is hold my ring finger. This is gonna be going fast, but this is not a knot tying video. Just know I use the Alberto knot. Look in the description box and you'll see how to tie it. Knot. I'll make about nine wraps away from that loop that I made with my braid around my fluorocarbon. All right. Now I got another buddy, Rob Jordan. You've seen him in a lot of my videos. He uses the double uni. He uses a lot of braided fluorocarbon, folks. If and there's a lot of knots out there that work. A lot of guys use the FG knot. I think the FG knot probably is the best knot. I ain't got time for that right now. And then I go after you do that nine wraps down. You go nine wraps back up towards the the loop. 
I just I haven't really had a problem with my Albertos so the best knot that you can tie for shaky head wacky rig crankbait Texas rig anything really the best knot you can tie is a knot that you can tie the knot that you can't tie is a terrible knot to try to tie so <clears throat> do that and right where it goes back down you want to go back down in that loop the same way and you like to wet your knot any knot you're tying even if it's straight braid always wet it even with braid braid even works better when you lubricate the knot before cinching it down before cinching it down you just want to slowly just kind of cinch that guy down watch it as you go don't just tie it all up and just pop. you just want to slowly make sure all those coils go together just like they're supposed to all right and then that's it alberto knot super slim knot it's easy to tie if I'm cold or if I'm wind or in the wind or if, you know I'm nervous. <laughs> a lot of times the tournament situation you can get get a little nervous. Or I can. Maybe y'all don't. I get all jacked up and, and I can get a little silly out there. You take that and then cut cut your tag ends off of both ends of your braid and your fluorocarbon. Alright, there you go. And there's your uh, I didn't do a very good job of cutting my tag ends there there's your alberto knot nice small knot we got tied there so now we've got probably six foot of 10 pound test leader material like i said 10 or 12 is where i prefer to be when you're talking about fluorocarbon um i mean talking about a shaky head if i was throwing like a wacky rig or maybe a drop shot i'll go as low as six or eight six is pushing it very rarely even use six anymore but most time eight ten twelve is where i'm going to stay let's go ahead and get our rig out now now we're about to get to the juicy part. The shaky head that I like to throw is actually a Z-Man Power Finesse Shrooms head. I'll just call so many fish on this one. This is this is just what I like to use. This is a one-fifth ounce. I know that's a weird size and it's kind of hard to have something to relate that to. But it's a one-fifth ounce. You guys are familiar with the Ned Rig. This is this is it. It's just got that shrooms head look to it. Just like the just like the Ned Rig head, but it's it's heavier. It's got a bigger hook thicker gauge but it's still got that that shroom style head that's what i'm going to use as my shaky head now what i've found there's you know obviously when i tie my my fluorocarbon to my jig head what i'm going to use is a palomar i have tried the you know the knot that you use it's got three tag ends i know gerald swindle kind of made it really popular or you know in my area made it popular that nut doesn't seem to work that well to me on smaller gauge line you can come in on the in the uh comment section if you know maybe you had better luck or different luck than me i'm just going with old school palomar knot and that's been proven to me it's just 10 pound test if he's that big of a fish or that strong i'm probably gonna break it anyway but i've had plenty of good luck with just a regular palomar knot i like any kind of two strand knot as long as it's two strand knot, I think you're going to be okay because you're talking about light, smaller diameter line, lighter line. So any two strand knot is what I would recommend. The one that you can tie the best. Palomar knot from fluorocarbon leader to my shaky head. Now, bait selection. I have two that I like to use. All right, two baits. I want to show them to you too. One of them and that one right there. Bam. I don't even have another color in my boat. It's this one right here. Green pumpkin blue fatties. This is a five inch stick bait made of elastic. You can catch so many fish on this freaking bait that it's just, it gets silly sometimes. So many. Here it is, green pumpkin blue fatties. What I like about the fatties is it's got a little hook pocket in the back of it, back of it right there that's, you know, just good little place where you pretty much don't even stick your hook in the plastic you just leave it kind of exposed and and as soon as fish gets it, a little hook pocket opens up and you and you really in five pounders all day okay maybe it's not five pounders whatever so i use him i use that one that's just uh the z-man fatties and i also use z-man big trd I, look dude i literally this is the only colors i have in the boat is green pumpkin blue and i have green pumpkin goby and the big trd the reason I don't have green pumpkin blue in the big TRD is because they don't make it. And the reason I don't have green pumpkin goby and the fat is because I don't think they make it. I use these two colors right here when I'm throwing the shaky head. That's it. I don't use no other colors. So, you know, 
I don't have, you don't have to send me a DM, what's the best color for Clark's Hill, or what's the best color for Shasta, or what's the best color for Gunnersville. I, if I'm one of those lakes, I'm going to throw these two colors right here. Doesn't matter if the water is dark, doesn't matter if it's clear. All right, here we go. I'll show you how to use a shaky head right here. Now, this is the Power Finesse Rooms shaky head from Z-Man. Now, really, a shaky head is just Power Finesse Rooms jig head is what it really is. Five inch. This might be a four inch, actually. I think the big TRD... Yeah, big two RD is actually a four inch and the fatties is a five inch. Never even pay that any attention because those are the two I just used. So you take that guy, you're just gonna rig it, stick it in. I go in about maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe nine sixteenths of an inch. If you wanna get really technical, pull it up and over. You see I got a little barb on my shaky head there. Pull it up and over the barb of that hook and then I just poke it in actually there's one more step that i like to do so that's what it's going to look like when it's finished okay one other little thing now you do this you do this right here you'll never i ain't gonna say never unless you break this guy off i'm gonna give you a guarantee you can take my word on it at least 15 fish on this one bait before you have to replace it maybe more depending on what's going on for today and how hard you're setting the hook and how excited you get. Look, put a put a dot of super glue right here on the on the on the underside right there in his panties and then just put it up on the jig head and hold it for like 4 seconds, okay? 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4. Let's call it 8 seconds, all right? 8 seconds like bodacious. Let's let's be like 8 seconds like bodacious the bull or whatever that was. All right? You're going to put that in there and then just just, you know, with Z-Man plastic, a lot of guys with the original, like traditional plastic, you would text pose that, which means you actually bring the hook through the plastic and then hook it back. I like to dig it, bury it right down in the plastic. Z-Man elastic is super soft, even though it's very durable and you see how it doesn't come down, it's very soft. So if one gets it, then you got him. Like it's, the hook's, hook point's gonna come through. So rig it like that, use a little super glue on the head. It's never gonna slip down, which is gonna save you a lot of plastics. I fish almost every day. I've got three bags of of these in my boat, and I've got three bags of big TRDs. That's really all I need. They get me through a lot of trips, even with two or three people in the boat. So that's what I'll use there. This is a seven foot two action rod. Like I said, I like a little bit stiffer rod for a shaky head. Number one, that's not even though that's small bait, it's not really that light. All right, that's not it's not that light of a little combination it's a one-fifth ounce which is pretty close a little bigger than an eighth and um you know 2000 series rod 20 pound test braid 10 pound test fluorocarbon you go down the bank with this in the springtime you're going to get hooked up so perfect shaky head setup that's it now i did say now this is the favorite hex 399 i know what y'all guys are gonna say oh i don't want to be able to pay that much i can't pay that much i don't want to pay that much that's cool my other setup is this one right here the favorite six stick i think this guy comes in at like 119 or 129 seven foot one it's a, actually a little heavier action be honest with you the action on this rod and the power on this rod i think it pairs better with a shaky head than the 399 it's just this guy's so light and it feels so good in your hands and i keep this guy in my hand almost 90 percent of the time in the springtime i'm using the hex but if you don't want to spend quite that much money the six stick seven foot one medium heavy it'll get the job done for you that is my favorite shaky head setups let me know in the comments the sections Holy smokes, there's a motorcycle coming by. Let's let this motorcycle get by. Let me know in the comment section. I don't think he's pulling a boat with that. Holy smokes. Let me know in the comment section whatever, what other setup you would like to see that I use technique wise. You want to see my chatterbait setup all the way through? You want to see my crankbait setup all the way through? Um, you want to know what kind of sunglasses I use? Let me know in the comment section. That's it. Hope you like this video. Like, share, and subscribe it.